Hi everybody, this is Tim Krause. Hey, I'm coming to you today with a special video. Uh, I'm calling this Golden, da Golden Dawn Tabernacle and Isaac Noriega Letter. I'm going to describe some events that have occurred very recently and I'm going to describe the action that I've taken. Uh, I had intended to do a different video today but we're going to postpone that video on a different topic until next week. But I wanted to share this with you because I think it's very relevant and very topical for the moment. Um, I, let, me, let me take you back a little bit and, and I'll give you a little bit of background. I had an opportunity to, to have dinner, uh, my wife and I, with some folks who are in the process of leaving or who have just recently left uh, or and have just recently left uh, the uh, Golden Dawn Tabernacle in, uh, in Tucson, Arizona. That's Isaac Noriega's uh, assembly. And, and they, we had a great opportunity to fellowship. Now, they, they reached out to me because they got in contact with Believe the Sign or, or became aware of the Believe the Sign and, and had been watching the YouTube channel. So they reached out and touched bases with me. I was happy to have dinner with them. We really did enjoy our, our dinner. It was great fellowship. Really, really pleasant to see these guys. I, I really, really enjoyed our time. Uh, subsequently now, somebody took a picture during that event somebody took some pictures and they posted it on their instagram page which is i i don't have any problem with them doing that but those instagram pictures showed me with a couple of those folks and that got back to a couple of people in their assembly most notably ministry members in their assembly who began to talk to them or question them about why they would be hanging out with me uh, particularly because I have spoken against the message of William Branham and I've spoken specifically against Isaac Noriega and his leadership of the church Golden Dawn. So <clears throat> that escalated into a thing um, and uh, we were, uh, you know, I felt really badly that a picture with me in it just because people had come to dinner with me or had chosen to have a meal with my wife and I would be the basis for so much consternation. So I reached out and touched bases. I attempted to reach out to Isaac Noriega, but I instead got a hold of a, a, a man by the name of Ray Aguirre, Agu Ag and I'm, I know that I'm not pronouncing it correctly, A-G-U-I-R-R-E, who I understand is an assisti assistant pastor, an associate pastor, something of that nature. At any rate, he's an assistant to Isaac Noriega. He and I had about a 40-minute conversation. In that conversation, he wanted to know what I had against the Golden Dawn Tabernacle. One of the things that I'd mentioned was a couple of people from that dinner had left the message the week before on Wednesday night. Uh, and this, this, by the way, this discussion with Ray took place on the 22nd of April, that's Friday night, 2022. Uh, it was just two days after a couple of people had, had announced their intention not to go back to the service, and they were called out uh, by Isaac Noriega over the pulpit and the some of the things that were said about them were pretty unconscionable. Uh, it was said that that the that the gentleman who left he he was had a lustful spirit. He was full of lust, and he just had to go exercise his lust in the world. He had to go exercise his lust, and that's he couldn't live the word, and he couldn't live in the message. It, you'll notice that it has to do with sexual connotations, and with, and that's going to be important to you as we go through this. But at any rate. We, so, so I called Ray, and he asked me what I had against the message, and specifically what I had against Golden Dawn, and I told him it was zero leadership. He failed. He and Isaac failed in leadership. He said, well, according to Scripture, we're to rebuke people publicly when they don't agree, and I said, that's great. Were they there? I mean, because you can only rebuke somebody in public if they're there, right? I mean, that's what rebuking is, is talking directly to them and and making them aware of what the issues are. But they weren't even in the service. They'd already left. So I said, gee, that's great. Did, were they there? Well, no, they weren't there. Okay, so basically what you were doing is gossiping. Basically, you were bearing false witness against somebody in order to discredit them so that other people, you gave other people the opportunity to disassociate themselves with that person. As it turns out, as a result of Isaac's discussion on Wednesday night, this gentleman's parents, this gentleman's family, 
called him up and or talked to him and said, we, we're done with you. We, we don't want to see you. We don't want to be associated with you. Now, let me tell you how tragic this is. This man's got a six-month-old baby, okay? He and his wife and the baby have left the assembly. They didn't leave God. They left the assembly, and and Isaac over the platform gave everybody in the in the church and his family permission essentially to disfellowship him which they did pretty quickly because apparently the people inside of the Golden Dawn Tabernacle the assembly members really don't use their critical thinking they don't I mean they've known this guy for years right I mean it's it's <clears throat> anyway so that happened. Friday, I get in contact with Ray, and we start to talk. I told him the way they handled people who were leaving their assembly, not leaving God, but leaving their assembly, was amazingly egregious and absolutely anti-scriptural. We talked about their taking people out from under the blood. It's not their blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. We talked about a lot of things as it relates to their behavior. And the question, and I said, I'd love to sit down and talk with you and, and Isaac about it. Well, what else do you have that, you know, uh, well, you create dependency. Okay, got it. I saw that video. Yeah, we create dependency. Okay, what else? And I wanted to get to the point where we actually sat down and had a discussion because I thought it would be productive. Ray actually said, uh, he kept asking me, do you think we're a cult? And I told Ray very honestly look I don't know your side what I do see is cult-like behavior and I would love to sit down and talk with you and hear your side of the story so that I can make a determination for myself as to whether or not I, cl I consider you a cult but certainly there's a lot of cult-like behavior that goes on with the control of the people and the uh, and the dependencies which are created and the disfellowshipping people. Well, William Branham said that, that uh, we should disfellowship people and that we should not uh, have them in our assembly anymore. And my argument was, uh, William Branham also said in his questions and answers, disfellowship, nope, excommunication, nope, that's not what we do. So it's very difficult to understand where William Branham stood on much of anything, let alone excommunication. But one could take quotes from William Branham's sermon and use them for either side of the argument. At the end of the day, which William Branham? And he said, well, the, do you don't believe William Branham was a prophet? Well, no, in fact, I don't. I said, can you tell me how he was vindicated? Well, can't you tell, was his response. My answer was, Ray, if you're talking about signs and wonders, as we see in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew 24, Deuteronomy chapter 13, signs and wonders don't vindicate anything or anybody as a prophet of God. But we do know what does. Deuteronomy 18, uh, starting at verse 20, it asks the question, how do you know when someone's not a prophet of God? And it, and it says very clearly, if what they say doesn't come to pass, they're not a prophet of God. 1 Samuel chapter 3, 19 and 20, and the entire world of or and none of his words were none of Samuel's words were allowed to fall to the ground, and the whole nation of Israel knew that he was a prophet of God because none of his words fell to the ground. And I said, and so here's my challenge: William Branham's "Thus saith the Lord." William Branham's prophecies and visions failed to come to pass. So according to those scriptures, oh, he said, I disagree. Oh, said I. So he did go to South Africa. Well, no, he didn't go to South Africa because you see he was stopped because he was stopped. So then we had a discussion about are prophecies conditional on the prophet? Let's use Jonah as an example. We went through that whole scenario. Ray really didn't have a whole lot in terms of re refutation of scripture. And it's clear to me that he really didn't understand the message of William Branham. He took only very carefully curated quotes and he, he parroted those quotes, he espoused those quotes, but he didn't talk about the entire message of William Branham. And it's clear to me that he didn't know scripture. He had no idea about the context of the of the the quotes that he kept spitting out, basically giving Isaac permission to, you know, basically talk badly about people in front of the, their his assembly. None of that is acceptable and none of that is reflected in scripture. But they use William Branham essentially to qualify or to justify the fact that th that's what they can do. At any rate, we ended the conversation, and 
And that was about a 40, like I say, about a 40-minute conversation or so. We ended that conversation with Ray committing to me that he would get back to me and let me know because I'd asked, when can we sit down with Isaac and actually have a discussion? I'll bring my Bible and we'll sit down and have that talk. He said he'd talk to Isaac and he'd call me back. Haven't heard anything back from him. Frankly, I don't expect to hear anything back from him. But let's go past Friday night. Now, that was Friday night. Saturday, I got a call from a former Golden Dawn uh, person, and that former Golden Dawn person told me that he had met at the grocery store somebody from Golden Dawn and said, that person said, oh my goodness, who is this Tim Krause guy? And this person said, why do you ask? Well, boy, there's a huge buzz going on at the church, a lot of talking. I understand, now this is where it gets interesting. She mentioned to this former message believer, I understand that he just got out of a 10-year prison sentence after having been convicted for sexual, uh, sexual crimes. You notice how sexual crimes always seems to be the thing with these guys? The, he left, the, he just couldn't stand the standards because he had this lustful spirit and he had to go exercise his lust. Tim just got done with a 10-year prison sentence because of his sexual crimes. I was even accused, during that conversation, I was even accused of having kidnapped somebody from Golden Dawn because there were pictures of me with those members from Golden Dawn. I was even accused of kidnapping someone from Golden Dawn. Now, I've been to, Houston, to Tucson one time. It was over a year ago. And frankly, I went to go visit some friends and we had a great time. We didn't talk to anybody or approach anybody who was a current Golden Dawn mem uh, assembly member. We just had a great time with our friends in Tucson. Haven't been back to Tucson since. My guess is it's going to be pretty hard for them to demonstrate that I actually uh, kidnapped anybody <laughs> because I hadn't been in Tucson for over a year. But whatever, I, I understand there were pictures of me and the other folks sitting together and or standing together. And, and that's how they took that, you know, gosh, I must have, that had to have been what happened is that I went and approached them and kidnapped them and, and blah, blah, blah. So basically the accusation or the allegations that's been spoken about uh, was that I had just gotten out of prison after a 10-year sentence for sexual crimes and that I kidnapped a member of the Golden Dawn Tabernacle, okay? So I, I wanted, to, and, and the question was asked, where did you hear that? It turns out that somebody else in the ministry or somebody else in the church had heard it. It's all over the church now. And, and, and as I go through and, and research this or investigate this, I find out that it was most likely a staff member or a ministry member that started to spread those false things. In other words, bear, bearing false witness against your neighbor isn't a big deal at Golden Dawn because they do it when people are, are, leave the church to go pursue Christ they never left God. They left the, the building. They left the church, that building. They didn't leave God. They just left the building. So obviously, that's okay to talk about them in that context, and it's okay to talk about people that are against or that speak against the ministry or the message generally. It's okay to say things like he just escaped a 10-year or got out of a 10-year prison sentence for sexual misconduct or that he, he, he basically kidnapped one of the church members. Having heard this, I thought about it for a little bit, prayed about it, had some discussions with some other folks, and I decided what I needed to do is pursue that because essentially that's defamation. That's a slanderous remark. It's not true. And I wanted to make sure that that didn't continue. So I wrote a letter. Now I'm going to put the letter up here for you. Okay. I'm going to give you an opportunity to take a look at the letter. Also, a link of, to the letter in my uh, Google Drive is down in the description block as well. You can take a look at it for yourselves. But essentially, uh, I wrote a letter to Golden Dawn Tabernacle. And I'm going to explain to you what I said in that letter because I think it's an important thing. I think it's really important to, to net this out and to essentially talk about this. Um, I, I am, well, and I can tell you who's really upset about this. I'm upset 
and and because I don't think it's appropriate that you talk to talk about anybody that way. But I have a wife who is about three times more upset than I am, and it took me a long it took me a while to get her calmed down. And she's not one that you want to get mad. <laughs> she's not one that you want to have go down that path uh, of being upset with you. I'm going to read the letter to you, and I'll also sh I'll share it up here with you so that you can read it along while I'm there. Dated April the 25th, 2022. Delivered care of 5536 Forest Avenue, Tucson, Arizona, via United States Postal Service certified mail to Isaac Noriega, Pastor Golden Dawn Tabernacle, and the address. Ray Aguirre, Assistant Golden Dawn Tabernacle, and that address. Dear Isaac and Ray, I'm writing today because I've heard that there are people in your assembly who are suggesting that I'm recently released for incarceration after a sentence of 10 years for which I was confined in prison for a criminal conviction related to sexual crimes. In the same allegation, I am to understand that there are those among the assembly who are under the impression that I kidnapped members of the Golden Dawn Tabernacle Assembly in the past month. I have heard this report from more than one source, and in investigating this rumor, I am led to believe that this information has been initiated by members of the ministry or staff at Golden Dawn Tabernacle. These allegations and rumors are completely and factually false. The spreading of these allegations and rumors has the potential to cause damage to my personal and professional reputation. Page 2. To demonstrate how incorrect these assertions are, I will point to several accomplishments in my work in education resume. I graduated from North Thurston High School in 1977. From 1977 to 1985, I was a member of the United States Army. My position in the service required me to complete a background check. No such allegations had surfaced during that background check. From 1985 to 1989, I was employed by, RDA, employed by RDA Logicon, now a subsidiary of Northrop Grumman, in the role of his user consultant. My position included support of the United States Army at theater, corps, division, and brigade levels to automate command control communications and intelligence systems fielded in several theaters of operation. For this position, the continuity of a secret security clearance was required. The federal agency background checks required to obtain and maintain the position and associated security clearances revealed no such allegations. From 1990 to 2000, I was a senior program manager and senior marketing manager at Microsoft in Redmond, Washington. I was required to travel to all of Microsoft's offices and overseas subsidiaries to speak, teach, and perform executive briefings. I was required to obtain the necessary travel permits and documents to travel to countries during these positions. These positions of responsibility would not have been granted to me with any criminal activity or incarcerations in my background. From 2000 to 2014, I was a principal consultant for a technology consulting firm specializing in systems architecture, systems management implementation, and business process analysis and redesign. Each engagement with a major Fortune 500 client required vetting by the contacts group for the end user client. It is during this time where I also completed a course of study at a theological seminary, which led to my ordination as a minister of the gospel. From 2015 to 2021, my last engagement with a client was with a Fortune 50 insurance company. During that engagement, the client required that I become licensed as a licensed property and casualty adjuster and investigator for all 50 states. For each state where I acquired licenses, federal background investigations were conducted as is normal and customary for those licenses. During these background investigations, page 3, no allegations of sexual misconduct of any kind were discovered, nor was there any record of incarceration for criminal activity of any kind. Had any such criminal charges, conviction, or incarceration been present in my background, licenses would not have been granted. Within the six months, my wife and I have applied for a residency visa with the Republic of Panama, assisted by an immigration attorney. Panama has very strict requirements concerning non-citizen residents that no application will be approved for any person who cannot demonstrate a clean criminal record. Within the past three months, and as a result of the application process, my wife and I have been subject to verification by the government of the Republic of Panama through the United States Federal Bureau of Investigation, who certifies that no criminal record exists or has ever existed. 
for either of the applicants, that is my wife and myself. This speaks directly to the notion of incarceration for criminal convictions of any kind. Seeing these accomplishments and the rigorous and thorough background investigations which have occurred in my past, you can understand where I would obviously be concerned about the allegations of criminal activity and incarceration. Should any of the, those rumors or allegations reach a volume or intensity that a potential organization who may choose to engage with me might hear them, the potential loss in revenue and professional reputation might be significant. As for the allegation of the kidnapping a member of the assembly over the past month, this is quite easy to, to refute since I have been to Tucson, Arizona only one time in my life. This took place over 12 months ago to visit with friends in Tucson. My wife and I did not approach or communicate with any current members of the Golden Dawn Tabernacle during that visit, nor did we kidnap anyone. Since my previous conversation with Ray Aguirre on the telephone, on Friday, Fe April the 22nd, 2022, these allegations and rumors have persistently been discussed. And it wasn't until that discussion with Ray that, I, that Ray and I engaged in that these rumors and allegations first surfaced. One can reasonably assume that the event which triggered these allegations and rumors was the telephonic discussion between Ray Aguirre and myself. Page four. You might also appreciate the impact that these rumors and allegations have had on my wife, Janet, who knows them to be completely false. In light of the allegation and rumors being spread, which are completely and utterly without merit or foundation, and which would reasonably be considered by any individual to be damaging to their character and reputation, which would limit activities and commerce in the Tucson, Arizona area, I have a requirement for the church. I will require that the church clean this up publicly, over the pulpit, in the presence of me and my wife. My expectation is that the ministry will let the assembly know that these allegations are without merit and that these rumors and allegations bearing false witness will not be tolerated. In the absence of such a public statement from the ministry in public and over the pulpit, I will retain all of my legal options for litigation for the damage which may be done to my character and personal and professional reputation. I will consider my next legal option in the absence of the ministry clearing up the obviously slanderous and reckless rumors in the next 28 days from the writing of this letter. Ray Aguirre has my phone telephone number, but to update your records I can be reached at and then I give him my telephone number. I will await his call to inform me as to the date the ministry has chosen to address this matter publicly and to invite me and my wife to the service very truly yours. And I also furnished a copy to legal counsel. That's the letter that I wrote. And again, I'm going to leave a, I'm going to leave a link to it off of my Google Drive. You guys feel free to take a look at it. Um, uh, there's nothing in there that's, that I, you know, that's, un, that, isn't verifiable. I'm happy to, to do all of that. But at any rate, that's the letter that I wrote. And the intention of the letter is to have them apologize. Short of an apology, if they don't bother to, to apologize, then we will consider our next options in terms of what are we going to do. It is despicable that somebody would shoot somebody in the back without them even being there on their way out of the building with falsehoods, that is bearing false witness against assembly members who choose to leave that building and that assembly, but this is completely beyond the pale and it will not stand. It will not be allowed to stand. I wanted to give everybody a heads up and let them know I will keep you up to date if there's a, uh, an opportunity for me and my wife to go to that assembly and sit in that assembly and listen to that explanation over the pulpit to our satisfaction, then, then we, we will consider the, the matter dropped. If that doesn't occur, then we have to investigate what our next legal options are and we'll certainly do that with the advice of counsel. Uh, and we'll be prayerfully thinking about it. I really appreciate everybody listening to this. I, I'll update you with another special video uh, when something else happens as it relates to this incident. But I wanted to give you a heads up and let you know. You know, the, the thing that comes to mind is the quote that said, 
evil is allowed to continue because good men do nothing. And, and this is a case where I choose not to do nothing. We absolutely are going to, are going to fight this. And we absolutely are going to have an expectation that this is going to get cleaned up in public by the ministry at Golden Dawn. So I'll let everybody know if anything transpires. In the meanwhile, I do have another video that's almost ready to go. I just have to edit it and, and uh, publish it and get it out. But, but I thought this was way more important to kind of update you on what was going on. Uh, and in the meanwhile, we really appreciate everybody's support. We appreciate everything that people have said and done. We really appreciate the fact that you guys come forward. Uh, if there's anything that we can do, the end card's going to give you our information. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us if we can help you in any way or if there's anything we can do for you. So for now, have a, have a great week, everybody. We look forward to talking to you again with the next regular video. In the meanwhile, I'll let you know what happens with the rest of this. God bless you, and I hope you have the, uh, a really great rest of April. Thanks now. Bye-bye.